Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another amazing episode on the Unleashing Potentials podcast. My name is Bernadette Desir, and I'm your host. Joining me today, all the way from the USA, Arizona, right? Yes. Is uh, Dr. Jerika Todd. And I told her that I would butcher her name throughout the whole thing. So I'm forgiven. Welcome, Dr. Jerika. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Where in the States are you? I'm located in Scottsdale, Arizona, and if I may, um, it's Dodd, D-O-D-D. -D. Dodd, yeah. Um, so, yeah. yes, if, um, I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona, and grateful <laughs> to be a guest for your show. Yes, absolutely. Um, can you start by telling us who you are and what you do? Mm, yes, who I am. <laughs> um, oftentimes when people ask you, who are you? you, We begin to say, well, this is what I do. We do that part. Mm -hmm. But who am I? I am a uh, woman who has reached her season of life where I, I feel as if I have more perspective. I am also more introspective mm -hmm. and look at situations and things that I encounter a lot differently than and I did uh, when I was younger. I am a pharmacist by trade and I've been a pharmacist for 25 years and that has afforded me an opportunity to um, be a part of many different parts of our profession. Most people have a very narrow view of what a pharmacist does or who they are. Mm -hmm. um, however, I've had an opportunity to be in many places in those 25 years and also had an opportunity to create um, businesses of my own, which is really exciting um, mm -hmm. after 25 years of pharmacy. Yeah, definitely. That is, yeah. 25 years. Wow. Yes. yes. Wow. And what has your career taught you? Mm, my career has taught me a little later in those 25 years to dream and dream wildly. Um, as pharmacists are trained, I imagine in many countries, um, we are more analytical, if you will, by nature. And usually we are used to following algorithms or um, equations or you know, uh, different rules, if you will. Mm -hmm. And I wish that I had known then what I know now when I was a new pharmacist to dream wildly because it's been amazing the things that I have dreamed of and then actually put goals and feet to them that have happened in the latter portion of my career that I never thought would have been possible. So if I had one piece of advice, I would say for anybody, whether they're in a medical or healthcare field or not, mm -hmm. dream wildly because mm -hmm. um, when you dream wildly and then you go about building those dreams, mm -hmm. that's where the fun is. Mm, I love that. Yes. And also your, your doctor. So where do you practice? Um, well, currently I have my own businesses. Um, I'm a doctor of pharmacy and that's the degree. That's the terminal professional degree of pharmacist in the United States now. So um, though I have, I've had that degree for 25 years, mm -hmm. um, I did what was called an entry level program where I went in mm -hmm. after high school graduation and six years later, um, I was uh, the recipient or I was conferred the degree of doctorate of pharmacy, which now that's uh, the only degree that you can get. It used to be that you could get a bachelor. So that's oh, where mm -hmm. it originated. Yeah, that's really and so, cool. Yeah, and I do practice in um, some settings of pharmacy, um, different settings to keep my skills, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but as I mentioned earlier, also an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. So who has been rooting for you throughout your journey and career? Who has been rooting for me throughout my career? Hmm. Well, the number one rooter <laughs> has had to be me. Um, I definitely <laughs> yeah. believe that you have to encourage yourself. I think sometimes when we go into um, non-traditional roles or we go and we stand at the, the threshold of doing something new, we mm -hmm. kind of look behind us to see who's cheering us along, who's coming with us. And I think one of the 
things that I learned in entrepreneurship is everybody's not coming with you. Um, sometimes in entrepreneurship, when you begin to embark on a new thing, it may um, stir unrest in others because they are thinking, well, I should be doing something different and not everybody's ready for that. So the thing that I had to realize was that I had to be my number one cheerleader because if there were people who decided not to cheer or not to clap in that moment, I can't let my emotion or my um, excitement be predicated on who's cheering. Um, after that, I would say friends and family um, to say, yes, you can do it. Sure, I know you can, um, but first cheer for myself. I love that. Yes. And I'm sure, you know, did you had some bumps along the way? I was oh, going to share, I'm sure all of us have had bumps before we yes. reach the top. Can you um, share with us some of those? Sure. So I laugh because you say, have you had bumps along the way? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Yes, I will raise my hand. Um, I think sometimes when we embark upon new things in life, whether it be marriage, whether it be entrepreneurship, new job, we think the road is going to be paved with crystals and it's going to be just wonderful. And it is wonderful because it is a journey. However, yes, bumps in the road. Yes, I have had um, situations where I was just thinking most recently where I've been asked or called to speak and I showed up to speak and what they asked me to speak upon was not what was on the title slide when they put up the presentation. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute, that's not what they told me. Yes. So, you know, those are minor bumps, but then I've had, you know, bumps where I have um, launched a service or launched a particular product that did not, was not received well by my audience or, you know, it, I have planned things that did not, I, uh, that did not transpire. I uh, said to someone before that oftentimes when I plan an event, the first time is really the learning experience because, you know, maybe I don't have all the people show up that I expect, <laughs> but I still use that opportunity to learn what I can and make the event even better the next time. So there are definitely bumps in the road. I tell people that that easy button, it only exists in the office supply store. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love those buttons. <laughs> <laughs> if only they work for real life. <laughs> yes, yes, I agree. Yeah. And also you coach women. Yes. Um, is it women any age or is there a specific age or stage? So usually um, I have been coaching women pharmacists uh, because we are trained a, def a special way in pharmacy. And usually when you're embarking upon an entrepreneurial journey, um, one of the things that uh, the clients that I've coached have been looking for is the how to, but also where do I get, where do you get the confidence? How do I stand up and bold, you know, how do I speak? How do I, um, answer questions confidently. How do I do that? And so I work a lot with my coaching clients on mindset mm -hmm. and also on their confidence mm -hmm. because I want to support them to stand on their own feet and take up the space that they are meant to take up on this earth. And that mm -hmm. sometimes I have had uh, clients from different cultures where that's not the culture of their um, their home or their place of origin. And so those are things that I work on as well, besides yeah. how to. <laughs> yeah, I love that you also work with your clients on confidence. Yes. My goodness, I, I think we're having at times a confidence pandemic. <laughs> it starts mm -hmm. so young from how we are programmed by yes. culture, family, society, whatever it may be, even community. Mm -hmm. And um, what are some common examples that you can give us? of what can kill confidence in the line of work that you're doing with those women? So we, we just talked about one, about who cheers for you. And you heard my yes. responses, I yes. cheer for myself. <laughs> first. And yes. to someone who may be just joining this um, hearing of this podcast, they may go, oh, well, that's a little something. <laughs> However, if I don't, if my grandmother used to say, it's a poor dog who can't hold up his or her own tail. <laughs> and so- if I can't be confident and grow my confidence and gain the confidence that I need, then when I'm in the marketplace, 
what's going to draw people to me? What's going to have people say, sure, I'd like to interview you on my podcast. Sure, I'd like to have you speak to my organization. I have to have a level of confidence and not a level of confidence that is um, superficial. So mm -hmm. this is not the imposter. I don't, I don't go for that. Mm -hmm. I have had to, you know, I, I talk to myself. I think about what I think about mm -hmm. and also understand that I have to celebrate my wins and give myself grace. So um, those are things that I think are very important with regard to confidence and having teaching women to give themselves grace, to celebrate themselves. So I am known for getting on a coaching call and before we get into the context of the call, I'm like, what are you celebrating this week? Like, I want to celebrate with yeah. you because I also know that sometimes the women that I coach don't have that rah-rah support from their spouse or their family. So I want to be that for them while I'm teaching them to mm -hmm. celebrate and support themselves. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah. You're also an editor of a magazine. Tell tell us more about it. Yes, it is my magazine. It okay. is called Pharmacist Magazine. And it is um, a publication that I came up with the name Pharmacist, S-I-S, -S, play on the word pharmacist. <laughs> and I wanted to celebrate women in pharmacy because I don't know how close you may or may not be to the pharmacy profession. There are plenty of magazines out there that talk about new drugs and new yeah, clinical yeah. perspectives and pharmacy. But I wanted to see a magazine. First of all, I saw a gap and I wanted to fill a gap. So I wanted to create something that celebrated women for women in pharmacy for who they are, not what they do. Mm -hmm. And so most people don't necessarily walk around and have a innate desire to see their face in a magazine or on a cover of a magazine. <laughs> However, it was part of my goal in one, helping these women to have confidence in themselves because there's nothing like opening a magazine and seeing yourself as the CEO of your business because many times we don't, even though we are, we don't think of ourselves, we go, oh, I'm just, I'm just me. Mm -hmm. But when you open a magazine and it says, here is this woman who has experiences and trials and tribulations just like everyone else, and here is her journey and what she's doing now. I think it's priceless, which is why I was producing the uh, the hard copy of the magazine because I think you need to hold it in your hand when yeah. you're featured in it. <laughs> so, um, and the other point, the other point of the magazine was to help these women market themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. How long have you been uh, working with the magazine and and other women? So I created the magazine in 2019. Um, I was on a journey to um, to find where I wanted to live next in the United States. And so I moved for a very brief time to Portland, Oregon. And what I found was that I was in a place that I loved. I was challenged to go live in a city that I loved. Mm -hmm. So I chose out of a list of cities that I made, uh, a, li a, cities, a list of cities Mm -hmm. a list that I made. I chose Portland, Oregon. And I went there and I literally just was kind of, you know, living and enjoying the city. And I went downtown to the city park downtown and walked around. And that's, I just thinking about what did I want to create? What did I want to do next? And the idea for the magazine came mm -hmm. and for the reasons that I stated. And so I made a phone call and I said, who do you know because I knew nothing about <laughs> anything about a magazine. And I said, who do you know who can help me publish a magazine? And mm -hmm. I was connected with my magazine designer and she knew me that I needed to have you know, some type of prototype cover, give me something mm -hmm. to look at so that I can begin building what, you know, pulling out what's in my heart and in my head. Mm -hmm. And we launched that first issue during October of 2019 Mm -hmm. And um, never did I have an idea of where it would go. Of we, I did not publish in 2023, mm -hmm. but we had the the fortune of featuring over 65 women from 2019 to 2022, and we're not done yet. <laughs> um, I took some time off last year to think about where we're going to go next. So mm -hmm. that's to come mm -hmm. this year. 
That's that's amazing. Wow, 65. 65 and, women that we um we featured over that time frame mm -hmm. and you know it wasn't like a specific number in each issue. I just knew when I had the group that I was supposed to have. And so my magazine designer, when she was laying everything out, she would always come back to me and be like, this is such magic in this, this group of women, because she's getting to know these women from, you know, what they have submitted about themselves, seeing their pictures. And she's like, you really, as she would say every time, you really have a great group and um, how they seem to be in the right issue with the right people. So um, it was a lot of fun and I was very grateful to be able to have women, um, one, like I said, see themselves as the CEO of their business. That's really cool. And also do you feature women from other countries or is it just in the States? How does that work? So at this time, at the time that I was um, publishing, all of the women that were featured may have been from other countries, but they lived here in the United States. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the, the things that I endeavor to do next is, um, is we were looking at, I was going to publish an issue for Canada and it was going to be um, you know, for an entire other country, if you will, mm -hmm. also looking at doing one for the UK. Mm -hmm. And so um, that was where I was headed next. And as I said, we took some time off in 2023 but those are all things on the table because ultimately I would love to uh, showcase women in pharmacy around the world. Mm. Yes, I can see that happening. That's why I asked. I, I think it's yes. something maybe you, you guys have been processing and kind of reflecting and thinking about it before you yes. jump <laughs> to make yes. it. Yeah, yeah. Because I would like to marry that with my love to travel. And not only, I mean, yes, can I produce a magazine right here in this chair I'm in and not have to ever leave <laughs> home? Sure, I could, but I would love to be able, and you have to remember, um, we started in the fall of 2019, which means the next year we ran right into the pandemic. So mm -hmm. actually many of the women in the magazine that were featured, I've never met before. And that was never my design, if you will, because um, I didn't know the pandemic was coming. Mm -hmm. However, when we get going again and we start doing issues in other countries, I want to go and I want to meet those women. I want to um, showcase not only um, them, but also what the profession looks like in their country, because pharmacy doesn't look the same in all countries. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It doesn't. And, and it varies. And also, let's not forget that women have, they've been fighting to be women for way before I was alive ages right? yes <laughs> right yeah. so I think you're empowering and amplifying uh women's voices from so many different culture like you mentioned even in the states mm -hmm. two people may look very similar but maybe they have different backgrounds and and different yeah. views on things and I love that you're doing that thank you I enjoy it and it's definitely something that I was willing to take a pause on to, to be able to have like kind of go to the drawing board and really create even yeah. more of what I wanted mm -hmm. versus oh let's just keep powering through keep powering through I, I thought it was best to take the time to go back to my dreaming and say okay now what do I want the next iteration to look like and mm -hmm. also work through you know some of the challenges that I have learned because there are definitely bumps in the road some of the challenges that I've learned along with publishing Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. You ready to shift gear? Sure. <laughs> All right. So obviously before the interview, we were talking about grief and grieving mm -hmm. uh, and you lost uh, your pet. Can you tell us more about that and how has the journey been for you, you know, to heal? Yes. Um, yes, you're you're correct. I did lose my pet actually right before the Christmas holidays, which mm -hmm. was thoroughly not my plan either. Um, so it was a very different Christmas. But the thing that I knew was that one, I made the right decision because mm -hmm. I promised myself that I would not allow um, my dog to suffer. And he, we had been given an amazing gift because he had um, been diagnosed with a rare blood disorder, cancer um, mm -hmm. type of disease. 
and he had had emergency surgery and me being the pharmacist mama uh yeah. pulled out all of the tools that I could mm -hmm. and um and they told me he would live 90 days after his surgery if I did not give him chemotherapy. And he, oh. in turn, I did not do chemotherapy. I did not think that that was the best route. Mm -hmm. And so in turn, I took a more holistic route mm -hmm. and he ended up living three years and three months instead wow. of three months. Wow. And so when I tell you every day that we got beyond that first three months, because that's how long they told me he would live, every day was a gift. And so um, to imagine that you got three years of a gift that you only thought you were going to have three months, I'm great. Mm -hmm. um, I never realized, I think they say you don't miss what you have until it's gone. Yeah. Of course, I love my pet, but boy, did I realize how much I love my pet when he was gone. So first the holidays were different this year. They were not the same because mm. um, I was used to having him around. I don't have children. And so in essence, he was probably more like a little child to me. Oh. And um, I think the first couple of weeks after he was gone, mm -hmm. I was very numb because it was the holidays, you know, mm -hmm. Christmas came, New Year's came. Um, and so I think I was numb, but once we got through January 1st, mm -hmm. I was like, wait a minute, like he's really gone. Like it, it yeah. you know, whenever all the noise of the holidays settled down, it really, I think I really, really felt the sting of him not being here. Mm -hmm. And so it's been quite an interesting journey to what I decided to do was allow myself to feel feel the, the happy times that I'm reminiscing over the ways that he made me laugh. I have plenty of photos and videos on my phone, mm -hmm. but then also when I feel sad to allow that to be and not say, oh, well, you shouldn't feel this way. And even um, don't even try to put a time limit on it. I just reminded myself the other day, it's only been five weeks. It seems like longer. And so I think sometimes when, whether we have an ailment of the heart or whether we have a physical ailment, we're always ready to, to be healed really quickly. You know, if you've ever had surgery and you're like, oh, I feel fine. I can, sure, I can drive now. Sure, I can go back to work. Well, I think that I was doing that mentally and then I would be socked again with a memory or, or something that would make me sit down and go, oh, wow. So it's been an interesting journey. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry for your loss. And um, I've been focusing on grief and grieving for a while and I don't intend to rush it because mm -hmm. this is an example that most people would not understand why you're grieving that long over a pet when really, like you mentioned, our pets are our kids. Yes. And I think any type of loss is uh, worthy of allowing that person to grieve how they want to grieve and to process what they need to process mm -hmm. and to not put a time limit or frame or restrictions on how they should grieve. Yes. Yeah. I have also been um, the recipient of some really great friends to mm -hmm. send me gifts um, to commemorate my dog's life or remind me, I mean, just and even receiving those gifts makes me, you know, cry all over again because it's so heartfelt. But one of the things that I even did was I, I reached back to one of my friends who sent me a gift and a card. As I said to her, you know, I need to apologize to you because you lost your dog some year and a half, two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I didn't show up for you like you have shown up for me. And not that I felt that she was sitting over there with a notebook keeping keeping record, mm -hmm. but I wanted to, one, thank her for the way she has shown up for me, calling, sending um, things, but also the fact that I don't, I did not, I think when she lost her pet, I still had mine. So I didn't feel mm -hmm. that feeling, if you will. Mm -hmm. But I said to her, I get it now. And I apologized to her. And she was very grateful for me. She was like, I can, I know your apology is very sincere. And I said to myself, should I ever have a friend experience a loss of a pet? I get it now. I know what my response is going to be, whether I have another pet or not, because 
I feel it. And I want to show up how people have shown up for me. I'd like to be that for someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Uh, What would you say to anyone who's lost pets before, whether it's fresh or whether it's been decades or years? Allow yourself to feel what you feel. Um, Don't get into judging yourself and gently uh, um, give people grace who don't understand or who cannot relate because they either didn't have or don't have pets. Mm -hmm. And also, I think one of the things that has helped me is that whomever I'm with, whether I might be beside a colleague, whether I may be with a friend, to share and that's my personality to share how I'm feeling and say you know I want to tell you something about me I met um, some friends new friends just this past weekend and one of the things that I said is you know I'm really grateful to meet everyone and I want to share how much I was looking forward to this because this was a really bright spot in my journey of grieving. Um, I'm really grateful to me. So then they're they're like, let me see your dog. So, you know, I have a picture on my phone Mm -hmm. and I just have made a practice to, if I feel however I feel or a thought of my dog comes up, I share with someone, hey, I miss him so much. Or, and I have found um, support in, the community that I have around me that may not necessarily be actively thinking about it, but that has allowed me to share whenever I feel. And it may be, hey, let me share this funny video of what he did, you know, years ago. And that has been really helpful to not assume that people know how I feel or thinking about what I'm thinking about, but when I am, share it. And usually I have had everyone to be very supportive that I've mentioned him to. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Was your dog a big dog or a small one? He was a little one. He was uh, about, in the end, he was about 15 pounds. Mm, yeah. yeah, so he was smaller. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I have a feeling he's still around, just not physically. Yes, I believe that. He's there I in believe. spirit. I believe that. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, what do you want my guests to get out of this episode? I want them to have confidence in who they are and whatever it is that they're endeavoring to do, whether it be a new venture or whether it be their career or whether it be, Mm -hmm. um, achieving something personal for themselves to, um, celebrate and give themselves grace as well as encourage themselves so that they have the confidence that they need. I find that confidence holds people or lack of confidence holds people back a lot. And so um, I think that even as we see the way that the world is going, I think all of us kind of have question marks around the top of (laughs) our head, like what What is happening in the world, but still live life to the fullest. I used to have a saying that I would say often and say, it's the best day ever. Mm -hmm. And I still believe that every day is the best day ever, even if it may not feel or look like it, it's the best day ever because you're still here. So live your life fully. If you happen to be walking through through a period of grieving, Mm -hmm. also give yourself grace and allow yourself to feel what you feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, What's next on your journey? Mm, Next on my journey, um, one of the things that I spoke about was um, how I had been challenged to go live in a city that I love. And so I've done that in a couple of places. That's how I got to Scottsdale, Arizona. Mm -hmm. Um, I've done that in a couple of cities here in the United States. Mm -hmm. And so I would like to live in a different country. And so not sure um, when that's going to shape up. I, for the longest, had my dog and just it wasn't the time. But now that um, life has changed for me, that's definitely an opportunity. So I will, Mm -hmm. I'm sure, be putting that back on the table to decide what I want that to look like. Mm -hmm. And who knows where I'll be going in 2025. Well, come on over. (laughs) I had a coaching client in Canada and I I see her uh, regularly and she is still... Um, amazingly um, Mm -hmm. doing her thing and her confidence exudes and I'm so proud of her 
So who knows, maybe you might see me in Canada next. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, I hope you enjoy the cold. <laughs> um, it's an adjustment, especially coming from Arizona and the types of temperatures that we have. Excuse me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that I would be pretty okay. <laughs> <laughs> she's like yeah. you say that now you're not here yet <laughs> <laughs> so um are you a reader you know some people read quite a bit some not so much mm, yes yes what I are you am. reading so the end of 2023 going into the beginning of 2024 mm -hmm. I have been reading more um, books by women mm -hmm. in finance and so one of my favorite that I am actually have actually been rereading is We Should All Be Millionaires by Rachel Rachel Rogers, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And then um, just uh, getting to the end of another book by Tori Dunlap called Financial Feminist. Um, and these ladies have uh, podcasts that go along with their books. And so I've kind of been reading and diving into, into both. Mm -hmm. um, and getting ready to start uh, with a book club, virtual book club. And we're actually getting ready to re, re we'll be rereading for myself, Think and Grow Rich. Ooh, sounds Bible really, I like the rich part. <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic, that, that, book is, that book has definitely been around uh, for a long time, but Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill mm. is one that I'm getting ready to undertake with a virtual group. So. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. So those uh, are the things that yeah. are on my reading list lately. Yeah, yeah, that's really, really cool. Um, two questions as we wrap up. Sure. <laughs> First one, what is the meaning of life for you? Oh, the meaning of life is to live by your own standards, walk to the beat of your own drum, I think we take a long time to realize that you really shouldn't care what people think. You really shouldn't try to be keeping up with the Joneses, but really live life on your own terms and what, what success, what living means to you, because I feel like you only get one opportunity to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I, I feel the same. <laughs> we get one shot. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. And you know, most of the time when we think people are judging or looking at us, they're too busy worrying about their own crap. Right. I, right. I tell my daughter that like, no one cares. Everyone's looking at their phone. You know, when right. I used to grow up, where I grew up in Haiti, I didn't have a phone for a very long time. Mm -hmm. People would actually communicate. Yes. But and on look the each bus, other in the everywhere, eye. Everywhere. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. People are on their phone. They even mm -hmm. walk on the wall, they're on their phone. So I agree. <laughs> and for me, I believe in in um, making sure to be present, especially during this age with the phones, because you can really miss out on interaction by <laughs> or miss out on what's around you by having your head down on the yeah. phone. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, last question for you. Where can my listeners support your work and uh, see what you're up to? Uh, so either on Instagram or LinkedIn, LinkedIn uh, from a professional standpoint is uh, where I spend quite a bit of time. Um, mm -hmm. I am uh, Jerika Dodd on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And then on Instagram, my handle is doctor spelled out D-O-C-T-O-R-J Dodd. Mm -hmm. And so um, that would be the best places to connect with me. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much. Uh... Thank you. I'm going to try and say your name, Dr. Jerika yes. <laughs> Dodd, <laughs> for being on the podcast. Thank you for empowering women and giving women uh, their voice back in so many profound ways that they either know or don't know. Thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you for having me. It has been my pleasure. You're welcome. <laughs>